is this you? You understand the benefits of using a data governance maturity model. You want to use one, but you don't know which one to go for. Understandably so, because there are plenty out there. We have the CMMI, we have the TDWI, Gardner, Oracle, IBM, so forth and so on. This is not an exhaustive list. So how do you select a data governance maturity model that you should use? Here are the things that you should take into account to help you choose the one that's the best fit for your organization. Hi everyone, if you're new to the Lights on Data channel, just know that I'm posting videos each week on data management, data quality, and data governance topics to help you become a more knowledgeable data professional. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Today's topic goes into the criteria that you should look at when selecting a data governance maturity model. And please stay until the end as I'll tell you which one is the most important one. In no particular order, the business drivers. The most important question to address is, what are your business drivers? What are my business drivers? What is the goal that you're trying to meet that you need the model for? Hmm. Yeah, what is that goal? What is the organization hoping to accomplish by going through a maturity model? You know what? That is a good question. Hmm, gotta think about that one. What about, um, I know, in order to get to level five. Listen, the answer can't just be in order to get to level five. Ah, thought I had that one. I mean, that is just a means to an end. And that end is your business goal. So you need to know what your business drivers are, what your business goals are. And it's important to know because you'll then look at the properties and offerings of each data governance maturity model through that lens. Let me give you an example. If your business driver is ensuring GDPR compliance, then the maturity model you select should have a data confidentiality, a data classification, or a data privacy subject area. It doesn't need to, but it might be helpful if it does. Because if it does have it, it will help you identify the areas that you should tackle first and the deliverables for each level for meeting that business driver. Now, why am I mentioning that it doesn't need to have that specific subject area, even if that's what you're looking for? Hmm. Well, because no maturity model out there will fully meet your needs. We just need to face the facts. That's the reality. Most likely, you will need to adapt it to your own environment, adapt it to your own industry. In that case, the model should be somewhat flexible. And yeah, that's definitely a criteria too. It's flexibility. But the good news is that most models are easily scalable and can be tailored to meet those specific needs that you might have. Though in the end, it's always easier to select one that doesn't require a lot of changes. Another criteria takes into account the resources. We cannot not talk about this one as that's at times really the deciding factor when choosing a model. When it comes to budget, there are two considerations. One is the cost to purchase the model, yes, not all of them are free, and two, the cost and resources required to implement the model. Let's talk about that first one. As I mentioned, yes, they're not all free. Most of the models actually cost money. And sometimes you can just purchase, you know, a document that's outlining and describing each of the characteristics for each maturity level. And you would just use that as a guide to assess your current level and then what are those steps to take in order to get to the next? Other times though, and probably the most common, the data governance maturity model comes as a package when you hire a third party to help you with your data governance program. In this case, obviously you're getting much more than the model per se, but it's also going to cost considerably more. Now this other more costlier option could be provided by a vendor that would sell you your data governance and data management tools to help you progress on the technical automation aspect of the model. But definitely take that under consideration. Not everything is free. You need to find out really what is that package deal, how much are they going to charge you for it. And besides the budget constraints that you might have to purchase the maturing model in the first place, 
you should also try and evaluate how expensive would it be to implement that model. Think of it this way. If you want to create a logo, you might want to watch a video on how you could do that best, how you could do that yourself. And as with the data governance maturity models, there are plenty of videos out there that will show you on how you could do that yourself. So let's take two examples. Let's take two fictitious videos. Video A. Video A will show you how to create a 3D logo that's really worthy of any major brand. Now, based on the info learned from this video, you would invest in some courses on color theory, maybe hire an artist designer, a 3D modeler, get yourself a drawing tablet, or get them a drawing tablet if you're hiring staff to do this for you. And of course, you might need to pay for some licenses for the required software and so on. Now, the video B, the second video will show you how to create a 3D logo. Still, that might not be at the same level of quality as the one from video A, but one that still really meets your needs and scope. And in this case, you'll be using your own pen and paper, maybe scan your drawing, learn how to digitize it further using some dedicated software, and maybe hire a 3D modeler for that last step to also make it 3D. Now, both of the videos, video A and video B, will provide you with a similar outcome. They would both cost the same in acquiring them. Probably, most likely, they would both be free. But even though they would provide a similar outcome, they would provide very different ways of how to get there. Because obviously, as we've seen, it would incur different costs and would require different resources. And yes, their final quality might differ as well, but that's why you need to understand the business drivers and see what you're actually trying to accomplish. The next consideration is the framework. If you do have a data governance or a data management framework in place, then that needs to be taken into account, especially if it's one that's going well in your organization. If it is going well, you might not want to change it, but then you also need a maturity model that really resonates with it. There's of course the possibility that you need to do some big changes in the framework, and that's fine, because the model could actually provide you with some clues as to what those changes could be and what to implement first. The last consideration that you should take into account is, well, the industry, your peers. Reach out to your peer groups and see which maturity models industry partners and associates use successfully. It's really best to identify those peers that are ahead of you in the area that you want to improve and find out if they are using a maturity model that you could emulate as well. Of course, you have to be realistic and know that certain factors such as the size of the company, its market share, its profits, and even its location could play a role in the chance that you could follow the same model or not. Bottom line though, start with your peer groups. If your company is running a small e-commerce store, for example, you can look at Amazon as your competition and as a goal that you might want to also achieve. But at the same time, don't expect that you can follow the same maturity model that they are using. Obviously, they would have a bit more resources to invest into it than you would. So what's the conclusion here? Based on the criteria aligned so far, you go and look at all the different maturity models and you would probably have narrowed down up to you know, your top two, top three. And it's important to present this top two, top three picks to your sponsors, the sponsors of your data governance program. If you don't have sponsors, make sure that you do get an executive level buy-in. Yes, it's important to get the resources for your program and the resources for your maturity model, but it's equally important for executive management to understand why the maturity model is important to your organization. You need to explain to them how the mature model will help with um, ensuring the organization is really spending resources correctly and appropriately on data governance and data management, and how it will help get your data, your organization data, to be treated as an asset and then transformed into meaningful information that fuels the business goals, that meets those business drivers. By sponsoring the effort, providing adequate resources, and accepting the final results, the executive management plays a critical role in going through the data governance maturity model. And in turn, you need to listen to executive management to know their priorities, understand their issues and resource constraints, and of course, tie that back to those business drivers. Now, I've mentioned business drivers quite a few times in this video, 
So maybe you're guessing that already, really. The business drivers is probably the most important out of all. You definitely need to understand them before starting your selection process. Thank you so much for watching. Please click the like button if you've enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on fresh weekly content. Thank you.